Yes. Can okay, you see my ahead. screen? Yes. Okay. My name is Natalia Kaladze, and I'm an art historian, curator, and also director of the Kaladze Art Foundation. And thank you so much, Piero and Nina, for your kind invitation for today's talk. And uh, I know today we are diving into the story and the history of uh, alternative media art and communities, as well as collecting, preserving, and displaying and lending digital media. But I would like to touch to touch upon the history of nonconformist art. Ever since I remember myself, I was surrounded by artworks which my mother, Tatiana Kaladze, collected over 50 years. On my first birthday, uh, Ukrainian-born artist uh, Pyotr Belenuk gave me my first work of art, which became the seed of my own collection. And today, the Kaladze collection of Russian and Eastern European art has grown to 7,000 objects, including paintings, drawings, sculptures, photography, multimedia, video, installation by more than 300 artists from Russia, Eastern Europe, and the former republics of the Soviet Union. The main criteria we use in selecting works were originality, talent, and quality. The particular movement any given artist belongs to was of less importance. The collection is, in effect, is a historical document illustrating the development of the main trends in nonconformist and contemporary art from Khrushchev thought to the present day. In order to establish some historical and cultural context for the development and introduction to the media art, at least in our collection, it is important to outline some part of history of nonconformist art. In the 50s, amidst the Khrushchev thought, a new wave of art emerged challenging the prevailing socialist realism style. This movement known, known as nonconformist art represented a spiritual awakening, a yearning for freedom. Despite lacking of unified aesthetics, nonconformist artists shared a common desire for individual expression and artistic freedom. They rejected the rigid constraints of Soviet ideology, instead seeking solace personal exploration and formal experimentation. Uh, my mother, Tatiana Kaladze, met George Kastaki, the prominent collector of Russian avant-garde, when she was only 17, and she saw her his collection and caught the collecting bug for life. His collection and those of several other private collectors, like Jakob Rubinstein, Abram Chudnovsky, contained works by artists that could not be seen anywhere in Russia. Popova, Klutze, Chagall, Malevich, Kandinsky, Rochenko, Ritko, their works were not displayed in official museums. They were kept in storage facilities, which were closed to the public. Those facilities were treated as they were secret military sites, like silos with atomic weapons. weapons. One could not even say word abstraction out loud. It was term employed only as hostile ideology. The atmosphere in Kastakis was always warm. Many artists frequent his place, and this uh, visits influenced them greatly. This enabled many people to see the original of the Russian avant-garde and to grasp the significance in the 20th century. The collection also contained the works by many artists like Anatoly Zverev, Dmitry Plavinsky, and Dmitry Krasnopetsov. Those artists of a later generation, when uh, my mother started collecting, she could not even imagine that it would be the seed of extensive collection, and in turn, it would serve as the basis for American-based foundation. The Soviet Union was the closed country with the with totalitarian regime. At the time that our collection was housed in two rooms of communal apartment and was shown only to friends who were interested in contemporary art. Rumors about it snowballed, new works began appearing in the collection from all parts of the Soviet Union, from Georgia, Estonia, Latvia, where my mother Tatiana traveled often. 
every period has a temporary borders and historical capabilities. In the last centuries, life proceeded gradually. And if the artist, instead of tempera, used oil, it was already a revolution. Every young artist with the creative potential strives to use new materials and to express new ideas. The advantage of the 20th century is that it allows the coexistence of many different, different uh, trends without canceling each other out. There is a long tradition of intersection between art and science and technology, and especially in the conformist art. And I just would like to touch briefly on two artists, Vyacheslav Klitschuk and Francisca Infante, who balanced the scientifically based kinetic and geometrical abstract art with metaphysical views of art. The, the easing of aesthetic restraints in combination with interest in heritage of the avant-garde and uh, exploration of space produced an interest in geometrical abstraction and kinetic art. And between 1962 and 74, the Dvizhenia, the movement group initiated by Lev Nussberg, inclu in, included in many in early years, both Infante and Kalichuk, who combined interests in engineering, science, technology, space, and art to propagate the kinetic art. Space exploration had opened a perspective on the infinite, Preparing for the exhibition in Kurchatov Center, Nuzbek wrote the Manifesto in 1966, which was published abroad in British and Czechoslovak periodicals. In addition to the commitment to kinetism, he announced the dawn of new sensibility. He said, we pioneers, we unite a world to kinetism. The Vizhenia movement connected, was, was concerned with synthesis of different technical means and art forms redesigning the surrounding environment, the symmetry and production of spatial compositions, the geometrical structures. In 66, the regional group split and Kalichuk went to organizing his own group and Vant Infante and his wife, Nona Gorinova, organized their own group. The complexity of ideas arising from intersection between art and information theories, between individual interests, and common expectation enable the artist to pursue the ways of thinking about art and society, to envision the immersive installation that offered viewers a glimpse into the unknown future. Later, the kinetic artists tried to combine and balance aesthetic explorations with official commissions. For example, Dvizhenia uh, did a work for the 50th anniversary of October Revolution. The Vyacheslav Kalichuk, he's a prominent kinetic artist and a scientist. He produced six sixth inventions, several books, and over 40 scientific articles, including one in the, for Leonardo Journal. Kalichuk is a here to early 20th century avant-garde and is, reflect, is, uh, is reflected in his preoccupation with the processes of form building and the existence in form in space and interaction also of form and the color. In this respect, his works echoing Rochenko and Igonson, Tatlin and Malevich. In his own work, he paraphrases the constructivism ideas into new idiom of special relationships. An example, when George Kostakis had, uh, was at a loss what to do with the Rochenko construction, it was my mother who suggested uh, uh, Kostakis to reach out to Kolichuk and uh, ask for the restoration. Today, this work is on display at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. So in his art, uh, Klitschuk concentrated on the experiment theoretical development of form, overcoming the limits of materials, kinetic and programmed art on creation of paradoxical create, uh, kinetic constructions and visual models and images and in search for new means of artistic expressions. The previous slide was one of his atom construction, which uh, Garage recreated in 2017. Uh, Francisco Infante, he is another prominent kinetic 
artist who is engaged into metaphysical and geomet geometrical artistic quest through, throughout a wide range of activity from early works on paper to painting to paintings to kinetic constructions performances and artifacts and installations his early spiral se series emphasize his interest in mobile and dynamic systems and uh, he from from 1976 infanta has explored art form which he terms artifacts synthesizing uh, natural and artificial defining a geometrical object uh, is geometrical object which is introduced into the into the natural environment object of secondary nature a thing made by a person that's autonomous in the relationship to the nature in this context nature and the artifacts operate on an equal, equal footing supplementing each other in fact creates installations nature and then he photographs them that metaphorically transforms the surroundings nature by introducing the preconstructed geometrical reflection reflective objects which later on he dissembles the the outdoor constructions eventually uh, are taken away leaving nature intact and the artifacts remains only in photographs image in infanta that's inspired the dialogue between nature and artist and the and the viewer the avant-garde was distinguished by a numerous collaboration Varvara Stepanova, Alexandra Rochenko, Alexander Alexander Alexei Kurchony and Olga Rozanova, Natalia Goncharova and Mikhail Larionov, Infanta and his wife and colleague uh, uh, Nina uh, Nina Gurinova. As well, we heard today from Elena Gubanova and Ivan Gavarkov. Also, there is no single unifying uh, factor uniting all all of all of these artists. They share a commonality, even if their styles are different. Their works themselves had their inceptions in the shadow and the rise and decline of the Soviet Union and carry the marks and pre uh, and and the end of the era and the beginning of the nebulous future over the years many artists moved to you know united states and uh, we we made a lot of efforts to connect art spaces this in 2000 in in, in 2004 and 5 we organized exhibition of Oleg vasilyev uh, memory speaks themes and variations in the state russian museum and critical gallery uh, connecting his career his artistic career uh which he have done in in the, in the states and in Russia, and as well as in 1995, we uh, organized the International Association of Collectors of Contemporary Russian Art uh, under the foundation. And we hope that the museums and the private collections, especially such as Northern da Northern Anti Dutch and the Zimmerman Museum, will play a prominent role in defining the place and significance of nonconformist art uh, in the conformist art in the world context today. And my mother first uh, first uh, met, uh, met Norton Dutch in 74 and introduced him uh, to many artists. Uh, and uh, it's, it's including including uh, Kolichuk and uh, Francisca Infanta. And uh, his uh, the, the work by Komar and, and Melamid Soul of Norton Dutch became the symbol of our exhibition Moscow New York for a real play, and that's the uh, photograph of his Norton Dutch in, in, in front of in front of uh, his soul. And uh, he was very happy how we safekeeping his soul. So how do we progress? from uh, nonconformist art to collecting and preserving di digital and displaying digital based art of Russia and Eastern Europe in Eastern Europe. Digital computer internet art as we heard today have been created for many years and they have entered the mainstream of art world. And the Whitney Biennial showcased uh, uh, the digital work as early as 2000. As we discussed today, the early history of digital art in Russia has an extremely complex history due to several factors, including 
uh, geopolitical, like isolation from Western art movements, lack of access to multidisciplinary institutions, such as, for example, MIT. And today we traced uh, with uh, uh, Anna Franz and Olga, Hish uh, Olga Shishko uh, the inception of digital art in Russia, starting from the mid-90s, the community-driven net art, digital interface to exchange of visual and political information online to today's complex hybrid works and techniques that rely on digital media in their creative processes. So how we how we uh, how we display and collect those fragile and hybrid and vulnerable works? Many archiving and, pres and preserving strategies include one more of, of the three main approaches uh, in preserving digital information, the static, the migration, emulation. However, even in combination, it is difficult to balance between the data and the appearances as it may cause an acceptable loss when dealing with the multimedia digital artwork. What are general guidelines for museums to redisplay digital art? What are museums do? What the collectors need what the, the collectors need to to be to be technically prepared to preserve uh, and redisplay artworks. What are the new formats for the exhibition? How can we display uh, conformist and the digital art together? What ideal collaboration between uh, curators, artists, and collectors? These are the challenges for each institution and the collector like ours as they entering and launching accession of works of digital media into their art collections. In 2021, the Kaladiert Foundation marked 30 years of encouraging a more diverse art world by advancing knowledge of art of Russia and Eastern Europe. We are delighted to collaborate with Silent Media uh, Art Lab on a number of projects, including presentation of SciFest Festival in New York. In 2022, uh, we uh, had a joint exhibition ID Art and Tech selection from the Kaladier Art Foundation and Franz Family Collection at the Museum of, of uh, Russian Art in Minneapolis. This exhibition featured works by uh, 45 artists, including Russian, Russian American, Ukrainian, Ukrainian American, and Estonian. So uh, Providing a context is one of the most important mission for all the museums. And for, dig for digital works, the context is often in, in combination of preserving documentation about the specific work and producing educational and scholarly material which enable access to the artwork as well as, as uh, safeguard its environment. Context is especially important in preserving work which are distributed, ephemeral, or interactive, such as digital art. With this respect to digital art, context is necessary on both the human and technical level. Digital art frequently present, uh, present, presented in dynamic network technical and social environment, which may include a human to machine, human to human, machine to machine interactions and others. Therefore, while collecting work of digital art, it's often necessary to document the environment and to allow the future generation, like my daughter who is depicted here on the photograph in front of Diana Franz work, to better understand the context behind it. So it's important to recognize that we may not be able or capable of amassing and complete and, and amassing the complete artwork, but merely certain sides of it. So while uh, preserving and redisplaying media media artwork of many of many cases, we, we should also consider the information aspect of digital artwork, and as as well as well as the physical object of this artwork. As often, in the, in, uh, as often, it's not only a monolithical object. The Kaladier Art Foundation is, this, is very proud 
to contribute to the dialogue around digital artwork by, by, by presenting digital artworks in connection with the foundation's exhibitions, uh, including uh, this leads to fire in, uh, in, uh, uh, in the Newburgh Museum, uh, concerning the spiritual art in the Museum of Russian Art, Moscow, New York, parallel play in Chelsea Art Museum, uh, part of the uh, idea of in, in different institutions. And uh, that's uh, photographs from the exhibitions in the National Arts Club in New York. So uh, we ho we don't want the new generation to we, we we don't want the present generation of our talent and contemporaries to wait for seventy years for the recognition. We hope that museums and private collections, especially silent foundation, will play a prominent role in defining the place and significance of media art in the world context. There are of course many many and an, an unanswered question for a long-term solution for collecting and preserving media art. For uh, preserving media art. As digital, and, as, as digital art techniques develops, they create and explore new viewers' experiences and interactions, artificial life and intelligence, challenging and changing the creative process and our ways we create the meaning. The life of the collections continues. Thank you. <laughs>